All right, so here's the tank so far. Got my baffles in. I did my fuel pump baffle. Hopefully you saw that in the earlier video. It, uh, I had to make a couple of slices up here because I was a little warped, but I think it's, I mean, it looks, as far as I can tell, everything looks pretty straight. I think it's fairly square, so, um, yeah, looking pretty good so far. Doing a little traditional CAD work here, cardboard-aided design, making some infills for these back cutouts here. These cutouts are for the kind of the faux frame rails underneath the back. I'll, we'll go back and take a look at those at some point and you'll kind of see how I had to cut those out to get it to fit around that. So, CAD. things all booger welded together. Check it out. So total volume 31.5.6 gallons somewhere in there. I'm hoping that I can get about 29 to 30 gallons usable out of it. That'd be nice. And I'm hoping that I get between 18 and 20 miles of a gallon with this thing so even if this even if I'm like at 18 or 17 even and uh, at 18 miles of a gallon 29 gallons that still puts me over 500 mile range on this thing which would be nice and then of course you know when the trailer is done I'll have a couple jerry cans on it and stuff so should theoretically have like 600 mile range uh, once the whole setup is done so That'll be nice because I only had a 200 mile range with the stock tank, I think, because the thing got such horrible gas mileage. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to only filling up once every four or five weeks. That'll be nice. So anyway, one last shot here. Um, had to do. I had to modify my original design. I'd made these extra cutouts on the back because I had to clear there's so the the factory frame rails stick down the front and the back for where this factory straps uh, hold the factory tank up so I had to clear those a little bit so uh, I think I'm gonna strap this to the skid plate and then when it goes up in then I'll bolt the skid plate up to the frame rails I got new uh, JCR nut strips to put in so those are nice and I ordered actually I ordered the uh, JCR uh, center console bracket and I think I'm going to send them an email about this because there it is right there hopefully you can see that's not too dark um, it's screwed down and it's mounted but the thing like wasn't even close to fitting and I don't know if because the ABS, not ABS, sorry, airbag module is underneath that thing. And so I don't know if that varies a lot, like they just punched holes at the factory and mounted those wherever. But uh, yeah, that JCR mount was 
probably a half an inch from off. The holes were half an inch off from fitting. There's my dog again. Yeah, it was way off. And so I took the airbag module off, the bracket off, and I elongated the holes at least a quarter of an inch, shoved it way forward, and the thing was still way off. So I'm not going to show you, but the back long skinny bracket, like it's, it's totally bowed and bent and it's hitting right up against the airbag module. So I'm not real thrilled with the fitment of that, but I got the holes to kind of line up and then just, you know, put some screws in it. So that'll be nice because the plastic bracket that came out of it, these, I don't know if you guys, with the, your late model XJs, I don't know if you guys know about this or not, but this is the factory bracket. And there's supposed to be uh, holes in the top of this to that the uh, center console inside the inside the armrest screws down to this, and then this thing screws down around the airbag module. And as you can see, like this one doesn't even have the freaking hole bracket on the bottom, and it is completely like this thing is total shit. So. Uh, anyway. That'll be better to have that because my, I mean, that thing's been broken for years and I've never done anything. Honestly, I should have ordered that JCR bracket and seen how they did it and sent it back and built my own, honestly, because I could have probably done a better job. I mean, it's powder coated and whatever, but uh, it's like 45 bucks. So, yeah, little little bit of buyer's remorse on that one. So, anyway, uh, tank pretty much done. Uh, I gotta fill this thing up with water, see where the leaks are, fix the leaks, because inevitably there's always leaks doing this kind of seam welding stuff. Uh, and then that'll be done. And so I'm tempted, half tempted to uh, have the outside of this thing powder coated. I've got a pile of stuff there the air cleaner, motor mounts, a uh, few other miscellaneous items are gonna. Um, go to powder coat Monday. I got to run over Monday and drop all that stuff off. And then I'm, I did my first bit of uh, aluminum welding the other day. So my accessory bracket, it looks good on this side, but holy shit, you look at the <laughs> welds. This is, so I have, so my, my Hobart has a, a spool gun that it came with. And I finally went and bought myself a bottle of Argon and, uh, tried my hand at it and man it's not easy um i've never done spool gun aluminum welding i've done a little bit of tig aluminum but uh yeah the, the spool gun stuff is that's not easy there's my spool gun down in there hobart spool runner 100 i mean it seems to work fine it's just uh you know dialing in the settings is it seems to be not very consistent and uh anyway so that was a challenge to do that um but you know I've, i i uh, i've got some other chunks of aluminum i'm gonna do a little bit of practicing and stuff before i do anything else i mean the things it's stuck together and i'm gonna have it powder coated so you won't be able to see my shitty welds but <clears throat> it'd be nice to get that thing dialed in so i can do some aluminum i'd like to build an aluminum roof rack because my roof rack over there right now it's built out of three-quarter pipe which is about one inch OD and then steel brackets and stuff on it and I think that that thing weighs like damn near a hundred pounds I think which is that's a lot of weight to have up on your roof so half tempted to build an aluminum roof rack but I don't know I don't that mean that thing works fine and it's not it's not that big of a deal I guess to have that much weight up there I do have those so I've got some real crappy Harbor Freight lights on the top of that and I do have uh, my wife bought me uh, one of these Shenzhen Shenren Chinese uh, lights for Christmas because I had it on Amazon wish list and so she just bought me a bunch of stuff off of a wish list but those actually the way that those stock or not stock but those Harbor Freight lights are mounted um, those will actually mount right in place where those are without any mods to the mounts or anything so i'm just gonna those were pretty cheap they're like 25 bucks a piece or 20 a piece or something so i'm gonna get three more of those and mount those up top and then uh speaking of lights <clears throat> so i've got these echo six led 
uh, lights that I'm going to mount on the bumper. I think you guys remember, some of you might remember the bumper. Um, I built this my bumper a long, long time ago, in like 2009, I think, or something. But it's been sitting over here in the corner for a long time. But it's a, I uh, modeled it after the ARB uh, bumper. I've got like, I don't know, 125 bucks in steel into building that. And as you guys all know, the ARB bumpers are, you know, thousand bucks plus shipping or something which is I know they're a good bumper but Jesus give me a break so I just uh, modeled that up in uh, CAD and made my own templates and and it's got a uh, winch mount underneath it so my winch is all hidden underneath and it's uh, pretty low profile it only sticks out maybe four and a half or five inches from the grill so it's tucked in pretty nice so but I got to make the mounts for those lights first and then once the mounts for those are made on that bumper, then I actually I'm going to take the bumper and the roof rack both to powder coat. I'm going to have those powder coated. I just painted them with some kind of, you know, cheap black tractor paint or something when I made them. And now they're all rusty as shit. So <clears throat> anyway, I, uh, I think I'm done welding for the night. I'm kind of tired of welding. I think my arms are sunburned. Well, weld burned. And uh, yeah done with that so i'm gonna finish my blue moon and go to bed so thanks for watching uh i'm up to over 100 subscribers now thanks for all the subs guys i really appreciate it um if you guys have any questions about the build or about the 5.3 swap or about the tank or like anything i've done just throw throw a comment and uh, i'll try and answer you the best i can um i know that there are a lot of guys that are thinking about doing this swap and don't kid yourself it's a lot of work but it's gonna it's is really it's gonna be worth it in the end i think it's you know you're getting double the horsepower and torque and you're getting a mileage boost and you know plus you'll be able to do crazy smoky burnouts or you know enter a drift competition or something when you're done so <laughs> uh anyway any questions or any comments or anything you know throw them down there and i'll uh, answer them as best i can so Thanks for watching, guys. See you next episode.